All right, guys, here I'm gonna show you how to assemble your parking brake assembly. Um, as you may know, on a lot of Subarus, even if they're disc brakes, um, they do utilize a parking shoe uh, within the disc brake. Basically, you've got your two shoes. When you pull your parking brake lever, these expand. It looks really complicated when you first dive into this, but it's really not. I'm gonna walk you through step by step. First thing I would suggest if you're doing this job is to do one side at a time because then you have one side for reference. I pulled this apart years ago, this driver's side, but I did at least think ahead to leave the passenger side intact so I had it as a reference. Also another thing you can do, pretty simple, take a picture, take a video, just go around here. Um, there's a lot of moving parts as you'll see. And again, it looks really complicated at first, but it's not. I'll go through step by step and show you guys how to do this. First off, I would highly recommend buying a rear disc parts kit. Um, they're like 15 bucks or less. This is the kit that I bought. Um, it almost came with everything. Um, and after I got this kit and realized it was about 95% of what you need here, I went looking at other kits and I'm pretty sure in most cases you're going to have to reuse a couple parts here. The first is this. Now, this is a weird piece. Um, it goes here and it spans between the two shoes. Again, if you take a picture ahead of time, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache. These are directional. Um, in fact, if you look, that says L for left and the other side is right. And you orient this with this kind of crow's foot going towards the front of the car and then this longer piece going towards the back of the car. And this raised part, you can see it's indented will go up and so this will be oriented like this here but that is one of the parts you'll have to reuse i just hit it with a wire brush you can put some grease on it to uh, clean it up so that's one of the parts you'll need to reuse the other is this guy this attaches here after you've attached this is kind of a pivot point this goes on here after the shoes will be oriented like this if you imagine it like a triangle kind of pointing down, I guess you could say. Um, and also the indent of it, you can, it's real slight, but the indent goes towards you. Now this is how mine was assembled. I'm totally hoping that this was assembled correctly in the first place. Again, I did one side and then the other, using the other as reference. I took a video too, just to check myself. And I believe this is correct that this will go on here like so. So these two pieces you'll definitely need to reuse. Um, but there's one more that, at least in my kit, you need to reuse. Now, these are my new shoes, but if you're looking at your shoes, you'll notice that one of them has this little pin on it with an uh, indent. Um, that gets this arm. Here's the part number in case you make the mistake I did, which was I threw away a lot of these pieces back when I pulled this apart originally. I assumed between the new shoes and the new kit, I'd have everything I needed. Um, but in fact, you do need to transfer this lever arm from your old shoe onto your new one. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But essentially, it pivots on this, goes around, and it clips in to your parking brake lever. Again, these are directional. There's a left-hand side and a right-hand side. Um, the part number I gave here is for the left-hand side. You can see it says LH right there. But this down here will clip into your parking brake lever. Um, but before that, you have to put it on your shoe. It goes on just like so. I'm gonna put some grease here and then there's a small C-clip that goes into that groove that holds it in place. Now, to get this off, you will have to remove the old clip. Um, best way I found is just to get something like a flathead screwdriver and wedge it into there. This is a new clip, which your shoes should come with. Basically, you just slide it in there, make sure it's slotted correctly. You can see there, that slot, this slides into there. And then, just take some pliers. Okay. 
more. This doesn't need to be crazy tight or anything, but it does need to be solid, not go anywhere. So there's that. This is ready to go on the car. Now, when you're disassembling, you'll notice that there's two pivot points, one here and one down here. These are the pivot points that the shoes will ride on. This consists of this pin, which has this little flat end on it, one of these springs, and then a cap that holds the spring in place. This goes in from the back through the hole with this edge, with this rim holding it in place. And then you'll slide this on here and it'll kind of be sandwiched in by this top plate. Now, these are a little tricky because you have to hold the pin in place from behind. You'll notice that this, this hat has a small slot in it. So what you essentially need to do, slide this on, push it on far enough that you can turn this and then the spring will kind of, once you get it far enough, it'll click into place. And that spring holds tension on it, on that hat. And that's what holds it into place. And then to release it, if you're having trouble releasing it, just put some needle nose pliers in there, grab that flat end and twist it and it'll pop off. So like I said, this goes in from the other side of the dust shield. If you can see it there. This one with the lever actually goes on the back, with the lever facing inside like so. And then this shoe will go on the front here. Now you'll notice that there's like a half moon cutout that is going to want to ride here. So keep that in mind, that's the top. A lot of this stuff, if, if, you, don't, if you put it on wrong, you'll kind of notice right away because it just won't line up correctly. So this is going to sit like that. Kind of get it wherever you need to. Now I'm using my left hand to hold that pin into place because we're going to be pressing against it when we put that hat on. Got my spring. I'm using my thumb to kind of hold it down. And then you got your hat. So we're going to try to push this on, push it, put enough tension on the spring that we can turn it, at least get it started. You line the slot up. If your hands are greasy like mine, because I just greased that stuff, it might be a little tricky. You can at least get it started. You can use your left hand here to hold tension. And then while you press the hat down, turn the nub. There we go. Huh. That went smoother than the other side, I won't lie. Kind of move it around, make sure it's seated correctly. Oh, you know what? I forgot to mention, you'll notice these points here. There's three on each side. Um, I'm actually gonna put just a little bit of grease on them because the shoe sits on that. For one reason or another, these can get out of, um, they can get all screwed up, you know, from rust or uh, a lot of times they get pressed when you're doing brakes or whatever. Uh, just kind of take your shoe and put it up there. And make sure it's like more or less riding on all three points. Um, if not, you can pretty easily take a, take a mallet or hammer and <clears throat> hammer it either way. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I imagine it's gotta be pretty, pretty decent. So I'm just gonna increase that, increase that. This bottom one on mine's pretty corroded, but it's still gonna do the job, so. Well, it was corroded. I, I grinded all the crap off of it and got it looking nice now. Once you get this pin on, it's kind of hanging out there. We'll go ahead and get our other side on the same way. In. You can see this side better, I think, than the other. This side, like I said, the parking brake is going to go towards the inside of the car. But at this point, it's a lot easier to clip this lever on. And come on, come on, come on. So close. Got it started, I'm gonna use some pliers to try to, there we go. All right, so that spring rests on this lip here and it's clipped in. And then from there you can rotate it around. 
get it up over your pin. And that pin is gonna go through this hole here, like so. Again, a half moon cut out. It's gonna ride on this pin, so this is oriented correctly. And we're gonna wrestle our spring and hat on. If you have another person, have them hold the pin from behind because that's just one less thing to fight when you're trying to do this. Then you could, uh, you could probably even use pliers to press the spring down instead of doing what I'm doing here with my left hand. Okay. Again, I got it started. Take your needle noses. Grab that flat head and twist it. Okay, that went pretty smooth. Okay, cool. Just give it a wiggle, make sure it's all seated correctly. It's not gonna pop off. And that sits there. Look at that. This is how that hat should look. You can see the pin is rotated 90 degrees from the slot and it actually has a little indent that it'll click into. That size. Parking brake. It's hard to see it, but the cable comes in across to that clip. That little pivot arm, which is back behind here. Top plate with the spring. This needs to come together still, but more or less, that's what it'll look like. Okay, so once you get that into position, um, you kind of have to do the next step to get it to seat completely, which is putting the tension springs between these holes and here. But for that, take this guy, oriented how he talked, kind of sits on a little lip there. Then you'll have these two springs. They'll go in the hole here. The one will go here, just do one at a time. Probably a better trick to that that I don't know, but just get it on there. If you don't have this on there correctly, you'll know because it'll probably fly across the garage. Uh, make sure this is seated correctly, which it is. All right, this is not fun per se, but you'll get it. So this is not totally seated correctly here. So make sure both of your clip, both of your spring ends are completely in there. There we go. That's going the right direction anyway. Okay. This triangle piece sits on its own little lip, shoulder rather. And uh, you can see it moves a little freely there. And then both springs are now in place. The spring is where it needs to be, I think. Yeah. Again, kind of just wiggle stuff around, make sure it's all settling correctly. There we go. All right, you'll see that now that we've got the top kind of pivoting where it needs to be, the bottom is more or less loose. Uh, I'm gonna grab my other tripod and move you guys down so you can see that. The last pieces that we have are this guy, which is two pieces really. One side sc screwed in, the side just pivots. This is your adjuster to adjust the gap between the bottom. Um, I didn't explain that very well, but I'll, sh I'll show you here in a second. And then you've got this guy, which will be the last spring that we put in. So first I'm gonna put a little grease on this end little grease just so that this won't seize up that sits in there um, probably don't need any grease there this will sit here and if you loosen the spring it'll push these out if you
tighten it, it'll pull them in. So this is actually accessible, these teeth, through a hole here, um, which will get a rubber stopper when we're done. Um, but you can actually have all of this put together, your brake, your wheel, and if you back your car up onto ramps, you can actually get in there, pop this rubber seal off, and stick a flathead in there, and change this adjustment, like so. This is offset to one side. Just hold it up and see how it aligns with that hole. It looks like the hole is biased towards the rear of the car, so we're gonna put that towards the rear of the car as well. And that just clips in there. Oop. Like that. I'm gonna put a little tension on there for now just to hold it in place. And then this spring is not nearly as bad as the top springs. Just clip it in one side. Clip it in one side, grab it with your needle nose, get a good grip on it. Come on. Get a good grip on it and clip it into that notch. You don't know if it's in. Like I said, it'll go flying across the garage if it's not. Alright, something is not. There we go. Man, something's binding up here. So that is that. That is fully assembled. Um, I'm actually going to tighten this all the way. Um, if you hold up on this, it's weird. This spring kind of holds those teeth in place. I'm going to tighten this all the way down so it's fully backed off for now. So once everything's fully assembled, again, the shoes pivot on this point here. You've got your triangular piece sitting on its shoulder, holding them in place. Your two springs holding tension at the top. We've got our, I don't really know what this plate's called, but we'll call it a spreader plate with its spring facing towards the front of the car. They are in the appropriate notches. Our hats are set on our pivot springs. And then we've got our adjuster at the bottom with that spring going across. And at this point, you kind of want to make sure your hands are clean, not any crazy oils, because you really don't want to get oils on these shoes, but just grab them and kind of make sure everything's moving around okay. These feel pretty good. What you'll find is if you push one to the side, it might not be like, you want this to be a circle and it might kind of go like this. Whenever you put the the rotor on, you'll know if it's correct, and I'll show you that now. All right, so we've got our rotor here. Um, before you install this, these are shipped with an anti-corrosion kind of oil. So use some brake cleaner and a rag and clean that all off of there. That goes for the inside too. Um, this is your mating surface for these shoes, so you want them to be clean. Go ahead, line that up. And uh, once you get it seated on there, I just give it a turn and I think we're touching a little bit so essentially you want those shoes to be just barely touching and right now since I've got this up in the air and I can pull this off I'm gonna back that adjuster off or actually loosen it to expand it until we're touching and then I'll probably turn it like a half turn or quarter turn to bring it back in you want that parking shoe to be just off of engaging because um, when you pull your lever, you don't want it to have to make up a whole bunch of room to finally engage. You want it to be like just off of engagement. So I'm going to pull this off. I want to hold the spring up and I want to loosen this out. A few turns. on okay so I think I've gone a little too far there because this is not wanting to go on very well so essentially I've pushed the shoes out too far so I'm gonna pull this off I'm just going to very slowly sneak up on this I'm gonna just turn it maybe a quarter turn at a time so I get it where I want it and again that's tightening that screw rotating it this way bringing in the threads pulling in the shoes not quite. Okay, 
Okay, so that is just starting to engage. You can hear it. It's definitely engaged a bit, so I think we're close, especially since it's not wanting to <laughs> come off there. That's a sure sign that it was grabbing. Try a quarter turn. Eh, half turn. Okay, that feels pretty good. Um, I think I'm gonna do like a quarter turn and leave it. Again, you can do this adjustment while the car's on ramps um, from underneath. All right, I'm gonna leave that as it is. Again, you can do this adjustment while the car's on ramps. Um, you don't have to pull the wheel off, and pull the rotor off just to adjust your emergency brake. Um, you pop that little dust boot and then you can just stick a screwdriver in from behind and push it up or push it down to tighten or loosen the spanner screw. Um, which I'm gonna go ahead and throw this rubber guy in the back. Um, you'll find the hole, I'm not gonna show that. Uh, and then that is it.